Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and today I wanted to show you what comes in the January Hedgehog Hollow Kit. The first stamp set is this one called Given Direction, and there are all these really neat stars and directional shapes. Some of them actually fit together, and there are these small ones that you can create little sparkly shiny pieces on your card, so I really like that. The next one is this one, and it has this giant watercolor piece, including this splotch. This one is called To the Moon and Back, and it's got this giant saying that says, I love you to the moon and back. Then the smaller ones say, over the moon, out of this world, and next time you think of beautiful things, don't forget to count yourself in. This moon one is so beautiful. It's called Just a Phase, and there are these beautiful moons with some necklaces that you can hang from this moon here. This round piece here will fit right inside this larger moon. And there are a lot of sayings on this one too, like it's a sign we were meant to be together. It's written in the stars, fly me to the moon. This too shall pass, it's just a phase. And then there is this one that is all sentiments. There are so many good ones, like without the dark, we'd never see the stars. Never stop looking up. Look at the stars, look how they shine for you and more. And this stencil is the star stencil that I absolutely love. There are lots of little stars that you can use. And today we're gonna to use the stencil along with this beautiful set. And I'm gonna show you five ways to get a perfect watercolor background. I have here some different kinds of paper. One is a watercolor paper, one is Bristol. I actually have some Nina Solar White and I'll be letting you know which one I'm using for which. For the first technique, we're going to use some distress inks and some water. So I have the Nuvo spray mist bottle. This, this gives you just such a fine mist. And so I really like it, especially for this technique. So I'm just gonna take three colors of blue and stamp them on here in kind of an ombre look. And then I will lightly mist it with this water bottle. I actually put a little more than I intended on this one, so we're gonna test it out and see how it works. I changed here to some watercolor paper. So the watercolor paper will really take this water well. I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute before I bring that up, and this is gonna smooth out as it dries. I'm gonna try just one more with a little less water this time, and see how that works. I'm gonna use the exact same color so you can see the difference between the both of them. I'll spray that lightly with this mist bottle again, and not as much this time as you can tell. However, I wanna make sure that it's all wet, and so I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute before pulling that up. You can see that I did have some pulling of the color, and it got a little crazy, so I think I may have done a little bit much on this one too, but you'll see how that turns out in the end. When you let them dry, uh, naturally, I actually think it looks more beautiful, so I did not heat set any of these. And you'll see in the ending, when we pull the cards together, you'll see just how beautiful the backgrounds all turned out. Here's another one, I'm gonna do a little less this time, but I also did spritz a little bit onto the paper. I don't think I showed you that really in the video. Let that sit, and this one worked a little bit better, I think. So you can see when I open the misty door, it cooperated a little. There was a little bit of pooling, but I took a tissue and just mopped some of that up. And so we have a much lighter watercolor look on this one. For this next technique, I'm going to take some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. These are water soluble markers, and they are really great for this technique. You can color right onto your stamp. And I'm taking a bunch of colors here. I've got yellows, blues, turquoise. Here's a light blue. I think I end up with a purple color too. And I'm just gonna color each of those on just a little bit. And then I will give that a spritz of water as well. As I said, these are water soluble. You can watercolor with these. So anything you can watercolor with is really gonna work for this kind of uh, stamp. I sprayed it there and I'm just gonna push that down to get all of those colors moving. There you can see the purple, I moved that up a little for you. And there you go. Now I went ahead and spritzed the water a little so that you, we could get those colors moving just a little more. And I'm gonna set that aside. Now here's where I realized some of the darker colors do actually stain the stamp. 
but by the time I'm done with this video, this stamp is going to be stained anyway. <laughs> it's just the nature. For this next technique, I am using some Gonze Tombi watercolors and I have a flat brush here. I'm just going to paint them directly onto the stamp. Now, I have already softened these with some water and let them sit for a little while before I did this so that I could just paint them directly on. And you can see I'm trying out some darker colors here, getting a little brave, but mostly I'm using the same color tones on all these cards just so you can kind of see the variation and what the differences are with the different mediums. So I've painted all those colors on. I am going to spritz it with water as well before I close the misty door and let that sit. For this one, I used Bristol paper because Ziggs really like to work well on the Bristol. And look at that, so much interest. I decided to add just a little more water here, you can see, so that those can travel, the colors can travel just a little bit. I have some ink cubes here that I'm gonna try as well. This time I am not using any water at all. I'm just gonna ink on the first color and then I will add the second color and we're gonna go down the entire stamp in this manner until I have all of the colors accounted for. You can see on this one, I try to vary where I was stamping the color so that it kind of moved back and forth between the two, the top color and the bottom color. I didn't wipe it off with a tissue or anything. And I felt like I got some harsh lines between the color variations, which was not my favorite. I did go over this one a number of times just to try to get those colors to blend a little bit better. But as you can see, I got some very harsh lines. So I am going to do this again. I started using a tissue to kind of wipe off a little bit before I stamped. And then you can see I didn't get a very good impression there. So test out your inks and your techniques to see what you like. For me, this one was not my favorite, but wait till you see how I turn it into a card. I think it really works in the end. Now I'm going to use some Catherine Pooler inks, which, were, which are some of my very favorites. I have this new Something Borrowed color, which is a beautiful blue, so I opened that up to use for this technique here. I'm gonna start out with some lighter greens. This is Lime Ricky, and I'm gonna go down and travel with the grass skirt color here, and I'm gonna keep on going with the Aquatini and then my new blue color, and let's just see how those mix together. Again, I am trying to vary the colors and you can see that I'm getting some lines between those colors. So I really like using the method of the tissue to kind of soften those lines so you get a really good blend between colors. In the end, this one worked out so beautiful with the stamp on top of it. I can't wait to show you. But before we get there, I've got another technique and that is using a Tombow marker. Now this is similar to the zigs in that you can watercolor with this as well. It's water soluble. I'm using only one color. I'm coloring the entire thing with the same turquoise color, spritzing it with a little water and stamping that down. Again, I used watercolor paper for this one, I believe. And it's just all one color. So it, it turned out a little bit softer gonna let some of that water drip around and see how that turns out. Now here I have some Ink on 3, some of their pixie dust, pixie spray, and I'm going to put it into one of these mini mist bottles, just pouring a little bit in there, and I'm gonna use that on some of these backgrounds, the ones especially that didn't blend very well. So this one I'm just misting a light spray of that pixie spray, and look at that. It's so sparkly and really pretty. So I'm gonna try that on one other one. This is the one that we used the, uh, the watercolors, I believe, the Gonzai Tombi. And that is just gonna add some beautiful shine. So I'm gonna set those aside to dry. And here's some of my other ones here that I've done. I actually sat through and created quite a few uh, just in you know less than a half an hour, I believe. 
This is so simple. And even though this one is not perfect, it's going to turn out perfect in the end. So no worries. That's why I called this five ways to get a perfect watercolor background every time. These techniques all work out no matter what. I am going to go ahead and stamp on some of these. The saying here is, I love you to the moon and back. So I have some Versa Mark ink and I use the embossing buddy bag first so that I could make sure that it wouldn't stick to anything else. And I'm gonna white heat emboss this first one. You can see that in the left lower corner, I got a smudge of ink there, but don't worry because I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix that. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do some embossing powder in some turquoise sparkle embossing powder. And it looks so pretty on that light turquoise background. So I'm gonna kind of work through these very quickly because I mostly use embossing powder on these. So real quick, we're just gonna go through on this one, I'm gonna use some black sparkle embossing powder, which is one of my favorites from Ranger. This one is a black embossing powder, but it's got a lot of glitter in it. So it really catches the light. It's very pretty. For this one, I decided to go ahead and use some VersaFine Onyx Black, which is one of my favorite inks for black stamping, especially sentiments. It gives you a nice dark impression and I'm gonna double stamp that here just so you can make sure you can read it over that background. It's a darker background, so this dark black ink really works well. Now this one is the one that I got too much water and the watercolor just kind of seeped all around. So I thought, well, how about if I use that watercolor splotch stamp? and try to fix it. I am leaving this in the video so that I have complete transparency with you. Sometimes <laughs> backgrounds just don't turn out the way you want them to. This one had a mind of its own. So I am looking at this and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, okay, put that aside and let's just see what happens. So moving on to this one, I'm going to again use some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I think it looks so pretty on this watercolor look. It's such a fun look. And then I believe for this one, I went ahead and clear. I used some clear embossing powder over the top to get an even more vivid black color for this. So that one, I really liked how that stamped on there. Now this is the one that we sprayed with the Pixie Spray, Pixie Dust. Uh, I'll have that linked below. I can't remember if it's pixie spray or pixie dust. Anyway, it's sparkly and it's beautiful. So for this one, I thought it would look really pretty with some silver embossing powder. Now the Versa Fine Onyx Black is a pigment ink, so it stays wet a little bit longer. So you really can use it to heat emboss. So I went ahead and used some silver embossing powder over this one and it really picks up that sparkly pixie dust in the background. You'll be able to see it as I move this around in the light just a little more as I heat set that. This next one is the darker one that I used the Gonsai Tombi watercolors, I believe, on. And so I thought a silver or a gold embossing powder would work well because it would just pop right off that darker background. So I ended up doing a gold embossing powder and you can see here in the light how that pops. So I'm just gonna finish up the last of these here. We'll do some more embossing and I thought I needed a purple glitter embossed background maybe. <laughs> Can't go wrong with a glitter embossing powder, right? But this one just kind of picked up on that purpley color at the bottom of this watercolor background. So pretty. Okay, back to this background. I hate it, but I wasn't ready to give up on it yet because I don't like to throw out any of my card panels unless I absolutely have to. So I'm still trying here. I think A for effort is what I get. I'm gonna use the black ink again on this. This is watercolor paper, so it is harder to get a good impression, but I went ahead and 
triple or even quadruple stamped that. And I like the black on the watercolor, but I hate that bottom portion. We're going to fix that. Here's all of our background so far. And look how pretty that sparkle looks on there. These backgrounds all turned out great. And now it's time to turn them into cards. So I know that we have a lot here, but real quick, I just want to show you some of the different card ideas. Now these are beautiful as they are. You could just technically add these to a panel, but I am going to do a few other things. So this first one is the one that I hated. Let's go ahead and cut that down. <laughs> so I cut that down and I just used a rectangle stitched frame. I'm going to add it to some fun foam here and pop it up on a little bit of pattern paper that has a polka dot on it. That pattern paper kind of brings out some of the turquoise and I'm going to add some beautiful shiny gems to this. Now, anytime you add something shiny that automatically makes the card beautiful, right? I actually don't mind the way this turned out in the end. So I'm going to just take some liquid adhesive. This is my favorite right now, the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I'm going to use that just to put these gems right on. This adhesive has not let me down yet in that uh, everything stays put together. So I like that. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry. Those will dry clear. And now I'm going to take this one that we sprayed that sparkle on. I'll cut that down with a rectangle stitched frame as well. And I'm going to add this to a denim background, which kind of mimics that, that denim look that we have at the bottom of the stamping here. So this one I think turned out great with that denim look. And I think you could use this for a boy card, maybe. For this one, I have a scalloped border. This is the one that the, uh, the watercolor kind of seeped down to the bottom, but when you add a frame border, which I'm gonna pop up with some 3M foam tape, the frame kind of covers any of the imperfections of the watercolor that dripped a little bit too much. See, you don't even see that anymore. So this worked out perfect. It looks like I meant to do that, right? <laughs> now for this one I was going to add it to a wood grain background. I have a wonky striped border, wonky background die here. Uh, that's from MFT Stamps. But I decided it didn't look right on the wood and background. Instead look at how it pops on black. Beautiful. For this next one I'm going to use this star stencil. I'll take a a makeup brush here and I'm just going to take some of that Catherine Pooler ink again and I will I will ink that on just very lightly all around the edge. So I'm going to continue to move this stencil and just kind of changing up the position as you go so it creates a nice background. I'll add some ink to that background of this of of the stitched cutout, add a little bit of black there and that really pops. For this next one, I will take some of those stars from this set here, and I'm going to gold heat emboss them all around the outside of the background. I took three of them, I just chose three different ones, and I'm just gonna alternate them up and use the Versamark ink here. We'll add some gold embossing powder, and then heat set that, and I'll do that around the entire perimeter. So we have a border of stars. This one I'm also going to cut down and pop up on some fun foam so that it gives it a little more dimension there between the stars and the sentiment. And there is another easy card with such a great, and it's a little bit darker, so it feels kind of like a galaxy card, a galaxy background, kind of neat. So there's that one. For this one here that has the smudge in the left corner, I'm just gonna take some sequins, cover that right up. Sequins cover up a multitude of sins on a card. <laughs> That's why we love them so much. And this one has a frame. This frame is sparkly. It's a frame that I cut off one of the others that had that pixie spray on it. And so it's sparkly and white. It looks like a, like a mat to a picture. And so that's kind of really neat. 
I'm adding some glitter with stickles to this one here. You may not be able to see it in the video. I'll hold it up here so you can see a little closer look. And I added all these to a card base, 110 pound card base. And here are, here's a look at all the cards that we put together today. So many cards with lots of different looks. I just adore this giant saying sentiment stamp. It's so pretty and it looks different in all of these with all the different colors of embossing powders, the glitter, the different backgrounds with all the variations. So it's kind of fun to see it used in so many different ways. I hope you got inspired to try one of these five ways yourself and to make some moon, I love you to the moon and back cards for all of your people that you love. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you again. I'll be back real soon with more inspiration. I loved making these cards with you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Drop me a comment below and let me know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much once again for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.